couple of weeks ago, a good friend of mine asked me, what do you think the world needs most right now? I gave it a good thought, and I answered, to learn. Think of any bigger or smaller problem you could solve in your life. Wasn't there always a process of learning or education beforehand involved, before you could resolve the problem? What do we do nowadays if we like to know something? We put out our smartphone and we Google it. And we got information on almost every question on Earth. We got webinars, we got tutorials, we got lots of forums on any question. But sometimes it's just too much. It's an information overload. And what's missing here? What's missing here? It's the human factor. Someone who can lead us through this jungle of fake news and of um, stakeholder interests and stakeholder-motivated communication. Someone who can take us by the hand and show, it, show us what's the right information, what information is really to the point what we're looking to. So let's put the smartphone aside for a minute and connect with other people and get in touch with other people. Nowadays, our planet faces so many problems. Migration, crime, climate change, environmental problems, starvation, very big issues. And sometimes we think we don't have it in our hands to solve it. But is that true? What can be a better key to solving all these problems than education? Here's what I think. I think we need more and better education. I think we have to share more of our knowledge and our skills. And I think we have to learn our whole life long. So let's have a closer look to these three points. We should insist to have motivated teachers for ourselves and for our children. Teachers who are devoted and love the topic they, they teach. So only if you have motivated teachers, they will make sure that their students will learn the stuff. I think also that we have to value people more who work in education. Kindergarten teachers, school teachers, professors here at the university. They should have a better reputation and they also should deserve a better salary. Don't you agree? Yeah? So, but we also should value what we can learn from each other. A couple of weeks ago, I visited a coffee shop and instead of plastic spoons or plastic stirrers to stir the coffee, they had dry pasta. Dry pasta to stir your coffee. So I like the idea. So whenever I go now to a new coffee shop, I ask for the owner and I talk to him about this idea and ask him, hey, could you do this as well? And I had some good discussions so far. I will keep on going, doing it. And maybe I find this one coffee shop owner who uses dried pasta instead of plastic. And imagine how many plastic spoons we could save if we all would do so. Or hotel rooms. Be honest. Do you clean your room at home every day? Who? No one. So, why having it cleaned in the hotel every day? 
just go to the front desk and say, you can spare cleaning my room for the next two or three days. You would save water, energy, and cleaner. So that's an impact. So with lots of small steps, we all together can achieve a big impact for our planet. Nowadays, the sharing community is everywhere. We share bikes, we share e-scooters now, we share cars. So some of you even, as we already heard today, do couch surfing. So let's do knowledge surfing. Let's share our knowledge with others. Share your knowledge and your skills with your friends, your colleagues, your family, but also with complete strangers. Because if you go couch surfing, you're sleeping at a stranger's home. So why can't you share your skills and your knowledge with a stranger? Ask yourself what you always want to learn. Sometimes you wanted to learn something because you have this very deep desire. Like many children, I like to listen to music. I listened for hours and hours the old classical records of my mother or radio by Andrei and listened there to pop music. I always wanted to learn an instrument, but due to the fact that my parents could not play any instrument and there was no time, no money, and probably no possibility, I never had the chance to. But then, maybe some of you had the same experience in Germany, at one time or another, we are forced to learn the flute. <laughs> so, I had to try it. I knew which fingers would fit to the right holes. And I started to blow, and it was a terrible sound. It was so unpleasant to my ears, and it was so different to the music I was used to listen to. So I wasn't motivated anymore to learn the flute, and my young musician's career ended just before it began. <laughs> but the desire to learn an instrument was still alive. About 30 years later, I married a very excellent piano player. She's sitting there. And when my wife moved in our flat, she brought with her a huge grand concert piano. It was wonderful. And there was my chance. But you know what? I didn't have the courage. I didn't have the courage to fulfill my dream. So it took another eight years, six years, up till the time when our then six-year-old son had his first piano lessons. He started from zero, and so could I. Finally, with power and dedication, I did what I always wanted to do. Now I can read sheet music and can play little songs even together with my son. So what's the lesson for you? If you have a desire to learn, start today. Better now than later, but better late than never. So just do it. Look for your deep, intrinsic motivation to learn something and start right now. On the piano, I will stay a student probably for all my life. But as a teacher, I started very early. When I was just out of school, I took a lot of seminars, how to be a good journalist, how to write an article, how to make film reports, and so on. So after some of these training courses, I went to the public foundation who was organizing these courses, and I asked them if I might teach these courses, because I had the idea that I could explain the topics much catchier and much easier. Maybe sometimes you have the same feeling with some of your lectures. <laughs> the very charming 
ladies in her mid-30s looked at me and asked me then, Nikolai, you're 20 years old. Do you really believe you can train people who might be as old as your parents? Yes, I said confidently. And she let me do a seminar on photojournalism. I was very excited, much more than today. So I entered the room, and I can read in the faces of the participants, they expect someone else. They wanted a real teacher, not this youngster. But I started anyway. I explained them how to make successful photos for their local newspapers, how they, how they could save money on photo material, because 30 years back, photo material was very expensive, photography was still analog. So, with the help of this course, they could save a lot of money, and they knew how to make good pictures. The seminar was a full success. Teaching was great, I loved it. And I still do it. All my working life, as a TV journalist, as a media manager, as a TV producer, and as a media trainer. I continued to teach. My learning here, if you like to do something, please have the courage to make one step to make it happen. It could change so much in your life, and it could even change your profession. Each and every one of you can give a lot of value for others. So look to yourself and look what skills you have. Think back of school. Which teachers you liked most? The best teachers in my class were the teachers who loved to teach, who could inspire our ideas and could inspire our learning. And they did it with intrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation is the best way to have better education. And there's scientific proof. Neuroscientist Eric Kendall proved at Columbia that the brain is able to remember anything much more better if there are emotions involved. You remember your first kiss? Yes? You? No? <laughs> Feels good? No? Anyway, proof enough? So, please, stay curious. Nowadays, I'm training business executives on how to be successful in compelling TV interviews, how to do a panel discussion, or how to react responsible in crisis communication. But a very important point in each and every of our trainings is emotion. The emotion when you try to bring a message across. And another effect if you train someone. With every training you do as a trainer to others, you learn for yourself as much as a student. So look for yourself. What skills you like to train? Teach them to others and you will be trained in. Stay curious all your life long. So for me, it's essential to do every two to three years something new. Another challenge for me. So I learned scuba diving, I liked, learned rock climbing, I was building a tree house for my son, I made a VR 360 production on zero gravity for a TV channel, and when I found out that I'm really very bad at accounting, I didn't just book an accounting course. I went back to university and did a course to become a certified private equity analyst. <laughs> and with this specific knowledge, I now help startups to grow their business. And isn't traveling a very great teacher? 
So Augustinus said, the world is a book, and if you do not travel, you only read one page. And we're talking a lot about the carbon footprint nowadays. So you don't have to go to exotic countries. Just look for the corners in your own countries you've never traveled before. Or travel by train, by bus, or by bike. And you can even combine traveling with humanitarian projects. You can help children or animals. I did a humanitarian project 1992 in the Ukraine. And the happy smile of the children of Chernobyl when we delivered medical supplies will always stay in my heart. So if you do projects like this, you learn for life. And it's so much value doing things like that. Anybody you meet can be such a great teacher. Just give him a chance. You remember this lady, Sarah Paddy Jones. She was learning at her 70s to dance salsa. And with her partner, who was 40 years younger, she was finalist at Britain's Got Talent at the age of 80. And if you see how this tiny person dances athletically in the age of 80, that's proof you should never ever stop learning in your life. It does not matter what you learn or at what age you learn something. Is it a new leisure time skill like salsa dancing or new sports like rock climbing, a new language or a new business skill like accounting or um, agile management? Look for your ideas and go for it. What is it for you? Let's do a quick experiment. Turn to your neighbors and ask them very quickly, what can I learn from you? And if you know the person already, ask for something new to learn. Just do it right now. So, okay, who of you, please raise the hand, has heard something very unexpected? Wow, that's great. So, you see, you can learn something just from the person sitting next to you. So, if you like to share some of your skills here with the community, please pick out the orange forms from your goodie bag, fill in your name and your phone number or your email address and the skill you like to share here with us. And soon we have the break, there's a big billboard in the other room and you can fix the, the form there and then the others can contact you. So, how can we create a better world? All of us here in the room and all of the people who might watch this video. Just ask two people in your neighborhood, what can I learn from you? What can you show me? To live in such supporting environment and to learn from others, wouldn't that be wonderful? So, let's take a step beyond. Let's don't leave the answers to the big questions to the politicians and to the scientists. Let's be part of the solution with more and better education, with sharing of skills and knowledge, and with lifelong learning. In this way, we can and we will make Earth a better planet. Be a teacher, be a student. Enjoy it and keep on going. <laughs>